with an AR-15 gun and begin to open fire. Mr. Cruz had been a, a school, had been a visitor, had been a student of that school, had been expelled. Reports have come out that at least 30 times the FBI had been notified of threats that he had made through social media and other ways. DCF had been sent out there and actually did a research and evaluation of him and came back and said that he seemed to be stable. But on Valentine's Day, when everybody was celebrating the day of love, this man with a demented mind and hate in his heart came into that school and began to open fire. He wasn't looking for a particular person. He just wanted to wreak havoc on a place. With the death count rising to what it has been up to 17 people and many others going through emergency surgery, the aftermath has been even more tumultuous because now there's conversation from Democrats and Republicans about gun rights. You have students who's, who were tormented as, as this was going on in their school. You had teachers, one teacher as she was up teaching her four-year-olds how to read, how to write, her child was being murdered in this school. That same mother was interviewed on one of the national network stations and, and they asked her, how do you feel about what's going on? She said, my heart is broken. She said, but I am at peace because of this, because I know that my daughter was a joyous child, and with that thought, I keep that joy. Today, brothers and sisters, I didn't come in to depress you based on that, but I come to let you know that that mother has taught me something in my preparation for it this afternoon. That mother lost a child. When they left that morning, she had no idea that was going to be the last time she saw her child. But that mother also said in that public, public interview that my child was a joyous child, and because my child was joyous, I will remember that joy. At a time when that mother can point fingers at everybody and talk about how, how great the pain is, she's focusing on the impact that joy brings. By definition, joy is simply the satisfaction of knowing that everything is going to be all right. It may not be right now, but it's the satisfaction of knowing that everything is going to be all right. I'm looking at situations in my life that don't seem to be complimentary of what I believe God will be able to do, but the joy lets me know it's the satisfaction of knowing everything is going to be all right. I say this way, Paul said in Romans chapter 8, verse number 28, that all things work together for the good of them who love God and them who are called according to his purpose. Right now, it don't seem like it's working out, but it, it works together for the good to them who love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Yes, I'm going through things in my life, but joy lets me know if I keep my eyes into the hills, but come at my help, all of my help, it come from the Lord. James is the writer of the, of the book mentioned after him. This is his epistle. And James, who is a slave of God, according to verse number one, is also the, one of the brothers of the Lord Jesus Christ. He was not one of the original 12 disciples, not even one of the, of the, of the apostles. But James is a writer about the, about the impact that Jesus had upon his life. And James is right. It's the first verse of James chapter number one. James is kind of just giving history of himself, talking about that he is a servant of God and the Lord Jesus Christ. But he goes right into verse number two by saying, Brethren, I tell you, kind of all joy Amen. when you fall into divers temptation. Now, if you know anything about the word brethren, brethren is written to those who are believers. So he's writing to followers of the Lord. He's not writing to, to, to atheists and people outside the church. He's writing to believers. And that no matter what you've been tempted by, count it all joy. But then to keep on reading, know why? Because listen now, if I'm going through temptation, I am assured that God will bring me out of what I'm going through. Matthew chapter number 4, verses 1 through 11. Jesus had just been affirmed by his father, just been baptized by John the Baptist. He's now led up by, by the Holy Spirit to be tempted in the wilderness. Three times he's been tempted. Three times he said, it is written. Yeah. He was tempted. And ladies and gentlemen, the temptations of God do not come for you to fall, but they come to show you how much you need his help. James said, brother, come to all joy when you fall into divers' temptation. Because you are saved, and I mean you are exempt. You're going to go through some things in this life. Yeah. But when you go through them, count it all joy. Yeah. And here is why. Because I don't go through by myself. Thank the Holy Ghost. I got a rider with me. And when I can't ride with him, I got a carrier with me. Thank the Holy Ghost. There are some times. There are some times when, when he walks alongside like footprints in the sand. Yeah. And sometimes when I get weary and my legs won't move, he can pick me up. Yeah. 
to carry me along the way. Whether I'm walking or being carried, as long as I keep the cannon on, cut it off, joy. The NLT said, dear brothers and sisters, when you, when troubles come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, verse number three, your endurance has chosen as a chance to grow. Imagine that, if you will. My faith grows through trials. It's a little bit different than what I'm used to because, because normally, 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 we, we, are, we are lazy people at a time, so we want things to be easy. But James is saying your faith grows through trials. I told this morning at church, I want to say it to you here. Now, listen to this. Before you get promotion, you gotta go through a trial. Every promotion is preceded by a trial. So the only who pray, God, remove the stone or no, leave it there. But give me the strength, Lord God, to try. I don't want nobody, Papa Jane, I don't want nobody preaching to me and praying for me who ain't been through nothing. Because they this way, a faith that has not been tested, the faith that cannot be trusted. I can't trust your faith if you ain't been through nothing. But when I see you suffer, and I see you fail, and I see you fall, and I see you trust the Lord, and He brought you up, I can trust that family. I all joy. And for those of us in here, I hear you, Holy Ghost, those of us in here who have been through life's trial, and we see God work it out, the next time you go through something, and you will go from the key. The next time you go through something, it'll remind the same God. Yeah. Yeah. Did it before. Yeah. Same God who will, who will do it again. Yeah. When you have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, yeah. that relationship reminds you and assures you that regardless of what you experience in life, the ending will always be for God's glory yeah. Yeah. and for your good. Yeah. Whatever God does, He does intentionally. For his glory yeah. and for your good. Yeah. As long as he getting the glory out of it. Listen, now, Job went through a trying time in two chapters. He went through the loss of possession, yeah. with the loss of ten children. Yeah. The first happened to his wife, said, You ought to curse God and die. Yeah. He, he had boils on his body. He went through great things. Yeah. Went through great things. Yeah. From chapter number three to chapter number 36. Joe's friends accused him, you did something wrong. 37, 38, 39, Job found himself questioning God. God, what is going on? And God responded to ask him, where were you at when I put the stars in the sky? Where were you when I hung the sun up there? Where were you when I put Orion's belt together? Where were you? But ladies and gentlemen, Job went through trial in chapter 1 and 2. Had his friends ridicule him in 3 through 36 or 37. Begin to question God and quite question him back. 38, 39. But in 42 and 10, the Bible said that we go pray for his friends. God gave his trouble for his trouble. And that's this now. I go through two chapters of great loss and great agony. I go through many more chapters of being judged and ridiculed. But when I pray for the one who ridiculed me, God came back to me more. Some of the greatest biblical characters, they went through some trying times. Yes. Yeah. 
We, and we quote them and we talk about how good they were, but, but you, can't, you can't shout their name unless you know their stories. Many folks like to see how you dress and where you live and what you drive and they, they get a compliment. They don't know what you had to lose to get what you got. They don't understand the story behind all that glory. They don't know the times you had to cry and go to bed at night and wake up still crying. And they don't know friends left you and turned their back on you and loved ones life. They don't know anything about that. When they see it's a Sunday year, they don't know how you had to rock yourself to sleep at night. But when God shows up, thank the Holy Ghost. But God ain't you don't know about that. Cut it all joy. Cut it all joy. Your James said, brethren, kind of all joy when you fall into divers temptation. He's talking to the believers. And this morning, this afternoon, I believe the Lord sent me here to say to the house today this one simple thing. Those of us who are followers of the Lord Jesus Christ, you're going to go through some things, but kind of all joy. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of all joy. Because if the enemy knew the truth, he would come to realize that, that whenever you hit me, I have somebody behind me bigger. Before I give you my point, let me give you a quick story. So I'm the father of two wonderful children, a 12-year-old son, a 7-year-old daughter. I love my kids. They love their daddy. And when they're here today, my kids are in the room playing in my daughter's room, and, and my daughter was, was being antagonistic to her brother, and she kept doing certain things. I kept hearing him say, leave me alone, leave me alone. He walked out, and she would call him back in the room, and we playing back and forth. And, and, I, and I heard him I heard him say, you better stop or else. And, and, and I come through the hallway very lightly on my feet, and I was standing in her doorway, but his back to the doorway. But she could see me, but he couldn't see me. And, 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 and he kept saying, leave me alone, leave me alone, leave me alone. And she, and she kept egging him on even more, even more. She got bold in her antagonistic ways. And, 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 and he kept saying, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? And, and, and then his back was to me, so he couldn't see, but she saw me. Uh -huh. And it was my presence that gave her the confidence that my brain was bold in because she knew if you try to hit me, there's somebody bigger than you behind you. What I'm trying to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, is that if any only you, I got somebody bigger than you. And so you send things my way, but 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 I'm not looking at you. And I realize that my God is bigger than my troubles. I, I, I heard TJ say this way. Not telling God about your problems, you should tell him your problem about your God. Because your God is not intimidated by your problem. But I guarantee you, there's your God. Put it on joy. Quick, quick, quickly, if I can. This joy that I have is because, number one, number one, because I have seen God do great things in my life. I've seen God do great things in my life. If my grandmother was still here, she would say, baby, you got history with God. She would let me know that, son, if you've seen God do it before, you can bank on the fact he's going to do it again. Okay. He's going to do it his own way, but he's going to do it again. Because sometimes what God will do is, God will wait till everybody has vacated the premises. Everybody turn their back on you. And then when he shows up, he makes sure, can't nobody get the glory. Because you realize, he ain't going to share his glory with nobody else. I, I, I kind of enjoy it because I've seen God do great things in my life. And ladies and gentlemen, whenever you've seen God do something in your life, it ought to be a reminder and an encourager that I can get through what I'm going through now. I can get through this. It's, it's not as bad as I think it is because my troubles have to submit to my God. Let me put it this way. Philippians 2 around verses 9 through 11 said, and God has highly exalted him, giving him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow in heaven, on earth, and under earth, that every tongue must confess that he is Lord. And here's the point to shout. It says that at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow, every tongue must confess. At the name of Jesus. Now, now, now why is this important? Because, because you ought to want your trouble to have a name put on it. Ah, uh, let me break it down to you. Because, it, because if your trouble has a name put on it, that name has to buy for the name of Jesus. I, I, I'll, I'll tell you again. If your trouble gets a name put on it, that name has to buy for his name because God has highly exalted it. And your name is above every name. So his name supersedes your troubles. Kind of joy because 
I've seen God do great things in my life. Thank you, James. And the, the, the second reason why I, this joy that I have is because, number two, I'm seeing God do great things mm -hmm. in my life. Not, not, not my past. I'm currently seeing God yeah. do great things in my life. See, see, see you're looking for the cars mm -hmm. and the housing and the pay. No, 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 no. I'm talking about I can breathe. Yeah. Yeah. I can inhale. Yeah. And I can exhale. Yeah. I can give you my lens. Yeah. Yeah.
never heard the noise. The noise told him she was close enough. I want to ask you, can you hear that he's close enough? Because now what you're going through in your life, if you can hear. Yes, My, my, mother, my mother pulled in, my sister, my mother pulled in, jumped in the car. And she said, Carlos, why are you waiting on the porch? She said, Mama, I, I, I knew that was you. She said, how do you know? He said, because I heard the noise. And she said, what noise? He said, Mom, your car got a certain noise. She said, my car ain't got no certain noise. He said, Mom, I'm telling you, got a certain noise. So then I got in the back seat, and I didn't care what they're talking about. I said, Mom, where are we going? <laughs> what are we going through? Because I was hungry. She, she, she said, she said, well, how do you too? Oh, you mad at me? I said, no, man. She said, what do you speak? I said, Mama, how you doing? She said, Gus, how was your day? She said, she said, it was good. We went to get something to eat. We got back home. I sat down, said a quick break. Jesus wept. And I began to eat. <laughs> you know how we are when you get real hungry, get to eat. And my mama said this to me. I was probably halfway into my sandwich chewing. She said, she said, it's a sin and a shame. She said, well, Mama, she said, because, she said, because I gave you money to buy your dinner. Yes, ma'am. You sat down to get to eat your dinner. Yes, ma'am. For a quick prayer. Yes, ma'am, I did. She said, the city of the said, I don't want to fish. She said, I gave you money to buy your dinner. Yes, ma'am, you did. She said, I'm going to eat. Yes, ma'am. For a quick prayer. Yes, ma'am. To say the same. She said, what are you talking about? She said, because one would assume yeah, yeah. that the one who gave you the money yeah. would at least going to thank you. Yeah. The one who gave you the money, I never said thank you in return. Because I couldn't buy my dinner unless she had given me a blessing to buy my dinner. And so she was saying, at least you ought to do is say thank you. 